By the raise of hands, I'd like to know how many of you have bought clothes during this last year. Please raise your hands. Okay, a mm, lot of you. Actually, all of you. Now, uh, what about this last month? Okay, maybe this last week. Okay, interesting. Now, um, how many of you are you aware of where your clothes were made? Okay, yeah. And what about who made them? Or what about the impact that your clothes are having on the person who made them and the communities in which they live? Okay, so good to know. So hi everyone, I'm Hector, this is my friend Patty, and we're here to um, introduce you to our social fashion uh, clothing company, it's called Beyond Beanie. It's actually a project which we launched a year ago. And before I get into much details, a little bit of the background. It all started with a trip to Bolivia. I had met Patty a few years ago in California while we were studying there. And we haven't seen each other for a while, so uh, I decided that, yeah, I'll, I'll go visit her. And once I was in the country, of course, everything was amazing. It was a beautiful country. I was fascinated with the people, with the landscape, with the food. Everything was uh, fabulous. However, there was one detail which bothered me a little bit. And this was uh, that I saw children working on the street. For instance, there were children that were selling candies, others that were selling fruits, others that were shining uh, shoes, and their mothers were doing some knitted work which they were trying to sell to tourists. Of course, I'm also from, I'm from Latin America, I'm from Chile, but I had already been out of Chile for a while, and when I went back to Bolivia, it was actually a bit of a cultural shock. Uh, it's, this is not something that we see too much here in Europe, so of course it, it was a shock. And I asked Patty why it was like this, and she said, well, you know, it's, it's kind of normal here, so don't worry, but it's like this, it's very unfortunate, but hopefully things will change over the future. Um, so um, I was really interested in um, what the ladies were doing. I really liked the colors of the clothes that they were making, the beanies, the other scarves, different accessories. So I decided to buy a few ones from different artisans, which then I took back with me to Europe. One thing that I noticed though was that, uh, that when I was trying to talk to these ladies, most of them were really, really shy. Uh, it's like they didn't want to talk to you too much. I was thinking maybe because I'm a tourist, but um, then I understood through Patty that this is part of the culture and I don't want to say too much because if not, I'm going to spoil Patty's story. But anyway, so I, was I came back to Europe with my products. I started to wear them and I began to share my experiences with my friends. And yeah, they, they all really liked the, the different things that I brought. And they were um, asking me, hey, so um, can I get one or how do I get one? And then they really liked that I was showing the pictures and everything sort of had a story behind it. So um, I called Patty really excited and I said, Patty, you know what? My friends are uh, super excited about the products that I have and they'd like to get some. So why don't you maybe get some artisans together, make some prototypes according to what my friends told me that they like and I'll try to sell them in Europe. So um, with these um, uh, products that you send me, we can actually give them to, uh, we can sell to my friends and we can help the artisans make an extra income. And now I wanna talk, uh, I, I wanna le leave the floor to Patty. Actually, um, when we started the project, she was, uh, she, uh, she's still an architect, but she was 100% dedicated as an architect. It was very, very challenging for her to, um, to commit, but uh, of course she had a big passion for what we wanted to start, so she committed 100%. In the beginning, it, it was all about weekend trips after work. Five o'clock, she would leave the office, she would take uh, the bus, it was about six to eight hours from her hometown to La Paz to organize the ladies, and she did this for a, a, um, for a long time. And yeah, I don't want to say anymore, but here's Patty. A big applause for Patty, please. Thank you, Tito, for the presentations. Hi, everyone. My name is Patricia Lucero. I'm from Bolivia. Um, uh, I'm really happy to be here today. And um, I just arrived in Europe a few days ago, and I'm very surprised with everything, especially with the chocolate, cheese, <laughs> and architecture. And also, I'm very happy with all the love and 
support that these guys and friends uh, give me on in this short stay. So, well, first to start with my with my speech, I just uh, I would like to if somebody maybe raise your hands and let me know if you had been in Bolivia. That's good. <laughs> I'm happy to see at least a few of them. I suggested you go. <laughs> Maybe you will like it. <laughs> well, um, like we said, we start our project. Uh, like um, Tito, uh, Tito already said, we start the project with the mission to helping artisans and children in need in Bolivia. Uh, at the beginning, well, first, let you know that, well, that was uh, my career is an architect, so I just love about designs and uh, about the buildings, and but uh, I didn't, I didn't know too much about the the arms and the walls and all these things, but I was um, I was uh, a lucky to always had a parents who support me. Um, commit me to, I mean, I always had food in the table, I have educations, I went to the university, and I, but this is not all the case for all the, for all the peoples in my country, you know. Uh, well, the sad part is that we have the 60% of the populations in my country, they are uh, Indians, so um, the, we call it the campesinos, and um, the, some of them, they, are, they don't have an edu education or they have a little bit. And the, the hard part was for the women that are from the Indian and also for the kids. But uh, don't, don't take me wrong, please, because my country is really nice, beautiful place, it, and we are happy. We have a lot of traditions and, um, and well, the, this, and yeah, and we want to focus in helping children. We estimated that the, between the five and uh, uh, 6,000 of children in orphanage, and this is the result of the women that they get pregnant, and some of them, these women, they, they cannot uh, affordable. They cannot take care of these, ki the, these children. Some of them, the, some of these women has, it's not just had one, no? maybe some two until five of these kids, and they, don't, they have been abandoned with their husband, so it's very hard for them to, to support them. So sometimes they take these children to the uh, child centers. Um, yeah, and we want to, in our products, focus also in, uh, in the kids, in helping in the, with the schools, uh, with the health and the food that maybe later we're going to explain you about how our project helping these kids. When when I started, uh, when when Tito told me about that uh, their friends like uh, uh, our beanies, or I mean the beanies that he took from Bolivia, he asked me to bring some from or a friend that I can send it from La Paz. So I take some uh, some weekend trips from my city that it was uh, eight hours from Cochabamba to La Paz, and I start doing this, uh, that was a challenge, some challenges for me. The hard part was uh, finding this, uh, these ladies that was artisans, and I began to, I realized that many of them, uh, they have a really hard life and difficult uh, situations and backgrounds. Some of them, they've been abandoned with their husband, and some of them, they're being, uh, from the immigrants from the country to the city, looking for a better opportunities for them and for their kids. And also, they were looking for a jobs in the, in the city. But it was kind of difficult because they don't have too much education. So the, the work that they can do it is maybe selling food or fruit or candies. And so I was um, motivated to helping them, you know, and in some, some of these, uh, some of these uh, ladies are from the, the culture Aymara, and some of them, they don't speak in Spanish, so that was kind of hard for me to, to try to talk and have some communication with them. And also they surviving, like uh, doing any, any kind of job, or maybe uh, working in the open marketing or cleaning house, well, um, there is so many experience, but I will just uh, tell you that um, that little by little, I began to, to gain the trust 
because even if you're going to help these women, you know, the, the culture are very close and it's very difficult to get into their lives. So step by step, I couldn't enter to their families and know the realities, even that if it's my country. But it's different when you are, um, you are sharing, you know, this, uh, this experience with them. If no, it's kind of hard. But uh, um, once I get the, the chance to get their, be uh, friends with them, we start working in that moment. Until then, it was kind of hard. So in that part, w I start um, combining, you know, some of our beautiful uh, colors from alpaca and, and other wools. And also, uh, that was the fun part because uh, that was designing, that the part that I like it. And also we have to match with Tito the, what the things that they, they would like it here in Europe, you know. And well, and another part that was very important for us is that uh, or every, that every product that we make it, I mean the, the, the girls who make it, had to be signed by them, you know. So we can, it's very important that we can motivate her self-esteem, you know, because these women are very little self-esteem of themselves. So uh, also in our website, we have the, the story of each one of the girls. So sometimes our clients went to see, to say hi or writing something. And we also give to the to these uh, artisans, and they were so happy. You know, that was something different. And in this uh, this short time, we saw that we we, we couldn't make some difference in their in their lives. So, um, and one another important thing is because they always carry. You know, the, this lady carry with the babies on the back. You know. So that was very important that they can work uh, from their homes, doing something that they like it, and also they can take care of their kids, you know, and also they can get some money, like we are offering some jobs. The more involved that I've been with, the, with these ladies, I get more personal like uh, for my achievement. So I told Tito, this one has to work because they, they counting of, you know, in us. So, Even if we do a small, uh, a small change in their life, was very important that we start working in that. Well, in the other part that we're going to uh, we're going to focus, like I told you, were the kids that we have a lot of necessities in my country, and these ones is because we have the schools, we have orphanage, we have uh, hospitals, and. I will let the Tito let you explain about the, how we work with our products. Thank you, Patty. So it's back to me. So yes, so as Patty was saying, uh, the first part was actually to help these ladies, but another great need in Bolivia is to help the estimated five to six, some people say up to 8,000 street children or orphans that are in the country. So um, we um, actually want to do this with the power of the consumer. So what we did is that every product that we actually make and sell is attached to a specific help. For example, with the, with the hats, you are given five meals. With, the, with every bag that you purchase, there's a set of school supplies. For every poncho, there's a school uniform. Yes, um, yeah, so it's important for us uh, that the consumer gets involved because it's the only way that I think th um, people like you can understand what we're trying to do. Of course, we also attach this with a strong fashion aspect. And why? Well, because we want to make this sustainable over the long run. And we also understand that people are very, very fashion conscious. And also because we like fashion ourselves. And yeah, we think it's a good combination between charity and fashion. So we work with a lot uh, of models and we get a lot of supporters from around the world who are actually mm, coming in to our project. And we're really happy to see the results and that people are really liking our concept and the most important is that they they see us as a fashion company that has a charitable component so people r really like the product and that's why they buy it and it's not like they buy it because they maybe say oh yes i want to help i buy uh, maybe one beanie or one bag but they will never use it so it's the contrary so we're happy to see that this is evolving the way that we want it to evolve this is an image from the first delivery of school supplies that we did 
And after we did this, we were like, wow, this is so amazing that we really need to, to make this happen. I mean, first it was like a trial, but we were like, we have to really push this. So now it's been a year since we started the project. It was actually just a few days ago, and that's why Patty came here to celebrate our birthday here. We're doing a tour in different universities here in Switzerland and also some places in Europe. And right now we're helping three orphanages, which is great. We feel really proud of what we're doing. We started with just three artisans. Now there are more than 10. And we can see how they've been growing with us. We can see their smiles, and it's great, a great feeling, actually. And also we've we're, getting, we're having friends from all over the world now, people who write to us saying, congratulations, we like the project. People that are buying from everywhere. For example, we have, we've had people uh, ordering from Africa, people ordering from, from Asia, from Australia, from Latin America, from North America. We even have people here from Switzerland that are buying our products, <laughs> so it's, it's great. So um, every product that we made is 100% Bolivian. We're glad that it's like this. We use Bolivian wool. Every product also we strive to make it as colorful. I, I mean, like with Bolivian cultures, we can bring a little bit of the Bolivian culture into Europe, as well as every product is signed by the person who made it. So those are our principles. And now the future. Uh, of course, there are many more needs that we, we, we try to, we hope to address with our project. And the next one that we've identified is the need for health, uh, dental care. And what we're doing about this, we we're just launching a new line of bracelets, which look exactly like the ones that I'm wearing, which are going to be coming out on our website in the, in the next uh, few days. And for every bracelet, we're going to help uh, provide dental care for uh, the children that we're already supporting. So now it's back to Patty. Well, I just um, well I wa just want to say thank you for to share our story about how it start uh, uh, beyond Bini, and also that uh, it's not just making a, a company that gain money or something. The most important and is that we can help others. If many other persons can do it like uh, like this, helping others is feeling so good. So thank you again. Thank you.